Hi, welcome to another episode of Think Chat. This episode is a little weird. Uh, it's just me. My name is Eugene. I guess I'm your host today. The other guy, Andy, well, he's downstairs in the manufacturing facility making face shields. Uh, our initiative last week on um, making face shields has really ramped up, and uh, it's all hands on deck here at Tinkering. So most of the people that would be in the office, well, they're downstairs uh, making face shields. Uh, I thought that we needed to still provide you guys with an update because COVID-19 is still happening and there has been this global movement of 3D printing companies that are really trying to step up their game to provide a solution to, well, the supply chain problem that we're facing. And also some of the more novel solutions that we just haven't seen before. Ventilator splitters is a big one of them. Um, so today I've got four topics. Um, those are all the things that we've seen that is that's really caught my eyes uh, more than anything else. And uh, the last one is really to point you guys in the right direction for what's happening in the industry. Uh, for those that are gonna wanna follow along to well, the development of 3D printing and how it's helping with this COVID thing, well, there are blogs and websites that can point you into a long list of things that are happening. So first, uh, first topic today is a local story uh, I felt it was kind of unique because it didn't have just an element of doctors and nurses, but it had an element of a student that, was, that got involved. Um, it came out of a town in Vancouver Island called Kaohsiung Valley. Um, small town, great town. Uh, I've been there. I actually like this place uh, quite a bit. And uh, there was a group of doctors, nurses uh, that came together, people with diverse backgrounds, to try and come up with a solution to the ventilator issue. Uh, in the event of an emergency or extreme emergency, how can they use the few ventilators that they have to well, service many people? Um, they are in, they've, they've submitted their proposal and their project to Health Canada. Um, I don't really know where this, the, the project is. You know what, maybe I'll reach out to them and see where it sits because uh, tinkering here, we're doing something similar. And I think there's, you know, moments like these, we can connect the right people, um, connect people on the same projects and just as a whole group move forward at a much faster pace. But what really caught my eye was a student out of Kawichan Valley by the name of Alex Marsh. Uh, he came from Kwame Chan Secondary. I don't know if I said that uh, uh, school name right. Um, he got involved in the project. Um, you know, he's stuck at home. Schools are closed. Uh, he wants to help uh, one way or another. And so he took his 3D printer that he bought for his hobby. And he's now printing samples out of these things for this group. Um, really cool. Really great. Um, a bit of a mo ma maker movement, but I think it's really... Uh, kind of what's happening around the world right now. People are tapping into this technology that they have at their, at their disposal and well, they're just, they're just tackling it, uh, which is great. Um, BC does have a really unique curriculum. Uh, it's called Apply Skills, um, <laughs> Applied Design Skills and Technology, in short, ADST. And you know, I hope Alex is applying some of that skill into uh, this project because that's where it's really meant to be. You know, using design thinking to solve a real life challenge and to better humanity. Uh, that is what he's going to get out of this. And being in the front lines, really tackling this challenge by the hour, which is changing. Uh, I mean, yeah, I can imagine the stress that he's facing. So, I mean, good on Alex for doing that. Second one is the maker movement that's around the world. I mean, you know, in the sea of bad press and bad news about COVID, there is this little glimmer of hope that the makers are going to make a, a bit of a dent. Um, not just the dent, but really a, a responsible social thing. Masks, shields, ventilator valves, this unique scenario of ventilator valves, uh, are in short supply. And there is this kind of underground movement to really try and get the nurses, the doctors, the supply they need to keep them safe. Um, and the makers, well, they tend to, they, 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 they're, they're really making this happen at whatever scale that they are making it happen at. So I give them props for that. One of the things that is really important across the board in this particular time is safety. Uh, safety from exposure to COVID, but also uh, safety for making the device sanitary before we give it to them. So for any of the makers out there watching, just make sure glove you glove up and uh, you put the face shields on if you have them, the face masks on. So in the event that we're asymptomatic, we don't give them to the, the healthcare authorities or the healthcare workers in the front line. So just make sure that that happens. Uh, third story is, I think, unique. We haven't quite seen this yet around the world, but we've seen it happen with other government bodies. Uh, the government of Canada put a call out for all 3D printing manufacturers to join in and 
in this helpful COVID-19. Um, Team Green is one of them. Uh, and we are doing our best with face shields first. And, you know, we'll see where this goes. I think there's a lot of supply shortages that are out there. We want to tackle what is possible for our technology in the really short term. But we also want to tackle what those challenges are for long term when this thing, you know, gets worse. Uh, I hope it doesn't, but it may. So things like goggles, swabs, ventilator splitters, um, getting into some of the more smaller stuff, door openers. I mean, the world opens up, but we want to make sure that the healthcare workers get their supplies first. And then the last one is just pointing you guys in the right direction. Uh, there is a ton of information out there, but I think uh, I just did a quick Google search and I found a, uh, a link by 3dprintingindustries.com and oh my God, they have a giant compiled list of what's happening around the world, big companies to small companies about how 3D printing is tackling uh, COVID-19. I'll leave the description or I'll leave the link in the description for those that are interested. I'm not affiliated with 3dprintingindustries.com, but I thought that they did a great job compiling this list of um, uh, activities in the industry. And yeah, it's a good place to start if you want to look at uh, what's really happening. So, well, that's, that's, that's the video. It's a super short one. I jumped up here with all the filming equipment because the floor downstairs is usually where our studio is and there's shop vacs going, going off, there's sealers going off, there's 3D printers, laser cutters. It's a little too noisy. I should go down and lend a hand to the guys on the floor. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. For those that just joined us, click the subscribe button, the bell icon. If you are interested in these videos, join us. We'd love to share with you. And uh, well, for those that are listening on any of our podcast platforms, Andy is usually the one that says them. I apologize. I don't remember what they are. But uh, if you are, um, you can listen on, on the podcast platforms. But otherwise, if you have any comments and any suggestions and anything that you guys want to see with regards to what's happening in the industry, leave us a comment. We'll get to it. I promise. Even in this hectic time where we're trying to address the COVID-19 scenario. So back to helping out with facial making. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Bye.